Hi. It is hard to be contrarian because you have to go against your lizard brain. That's the part of your brain that reacts emotionally. And not just go against it, but actually fight it. What do I mean by that? Well, all of us, if we have been properly educated, learn to overcome our impulses. We don't grab the last piece of cake at dinner. We don't tell that cute person what exactly you want to do to them. And we don't shoplift the watch we can't afford. At least most of us don't. Or we wouldn't have friends or family or even liberty. But the thing that is hard to do for nearly everyone, even the civilized and the educated, is to resist extreme emotions. And in the market, this means fear and greed. Or to use the more fitting words, panic and euphoria. These are the times where your brain becomes a quivering piece of jelly and you simply can't resist its urgings. These are the times of FOMO and follow, fear of missing out at the top or fear of losing out everything at the bottom. That's when you feel you must chase the market so you won't be left out or that you must run away from it so it won't kill you. In both these extreme cases, you'll be dead wrong and should do the opposite. Right now, it is FOMO. That is fear of missing out. The market is on a red hot streak and everyone is chasing it almost any price, which is where being contrarian pays. Or as Warren Buffett said, be greedy when all are fearful and fearful when all are greedy. But how to know when to be which? As you know, I go by physical sleuthing, not by charts and indicators, but for extreme times, there's an indicator that can both save you money and help you take the money of others if you do the opposite, if you can. I'm talking about the fear and greed index. This index is a combination of several smaller indicators lumped together, seven of them. The combo can go from zero to 100, but usually is somewhere in the middle. And then it doesn't matter much. That's when you go sleuthing. But when it is at one of the extremes, you better pay attention and do the opposite. Or is it now? Right now, the fear grid index is flashing bright danger red. It says the market is dangerously, irrationally euphoric. Everyone is chasing stocks without regard for prices. So beware. Better stay on the sidelines. And if you want to buy a stock, postpone the purchase and do more sleuthing. This can never hurt. And if you hesitate whether you should buy or sell, don't hesitate. Sell. And just what is this fear and greed index composed of? There are seven components. First is the difference between stock and bond returns over the last 20 days. When stock do better than bonds, this sub-index shows greed. When they do much better than bonds, it shows extreme greed. Today is the letter, extreme greeds of stocks versus bonds. The second component is the put to call ratio. It shows how many gamble on the market going up via calls versus how many gamble on decline via puts. This today also shows extreme greed. The third component is the market breadth index. When market breadth is strong, stocks move together. When almost all stocks move together, it shows extreme greed. That is the case today. Every stock seems to be on fire. The fourth component is the 52 week high and lows on the New York Stock Exchange. And this too shows extreme greed today. The fifth is market momentum. How much is the S&P index above its moving average? Again, today it shows extreme greed. It is very extended. The sixth component is junk bonds demand, measured by the difference between junk bond yield and investment grade bonds, which usually yield less. This too today shows extreme greed. Finally, the market volatility index, which is the difference between the VIX the measure of my volatility and its moving average. This today is the only one which is neutral. All in all, the fear and greed index today is at a 91 level, nosebleed level. The only time it was as high or a tad higher was in December 2019 and January to mid-February 2020, just before COVID hit and the market plunged 35% into March. Phew. In March, by the way, the fear and greed index fell to five. Hysteria of selling, which was just the time to buy stock against your lizard brain. If you could resist 
your panic release break then, which was screened at you to sell everything because the world is ending. Well, the world didn't end in February this year, didn't end in March, and today everything is roses, peaches, and cream. Several vaccines are coming soon, and your lizard brain is salivating to get in on the prosperity, no matter what. Why? Well, don't. Not so fast. At the fear and greed index of 91, it's highly likely that whatever you buy today can be cheaper sometime in the next 6 to 12 months. How do I know? Well, I don't know. I only know that in the past, whenever extremes such as this one appeared, it paid to do the opposite. Yes, it's hard to fight to lose the brain, but it sure pays. Now, what can the tumble the market from here? Who knows? Anything. For one thing, everyone is convinced that Biden is in, Trump is out. Well, maybe yes, maybe no. If the US Supreme Court throws, uh, accept that there was cheating and throws it to Congress, where the GOP has majority of states, there may be riots. When those who didn't do sleuthing into court cases that Twitter didn't show may be stunned to learn they've gotten it wrong. Or Trump may be out, but it may come out that vaccinations don't work as advertised, or that the side effects are very bad. Or Trump may decide in his last days to launch an attack on Iran. Or China may decide to grab Taiwan or anything else. Who knows? I can't read the future, nor can anyone, but the market somehow can. Oddly enough, Two months before COVID hit, the market peaked in January and February, and the fear and greed index then peaked also at 90 plus. Is it peaking now? Who knows? But signs of euphoria are surely here in the fear and greed index, which is well above 90. And these signs show that right now the market is euphoric. So, like a good student of Warren Buffett, I am very cautious. What should you be? That, of course, is up to you. Do your own sleuthing, do your own work. And by the way, this caution also means that gold, which usually does best in times of upheaval, may do well from here after being shunned by all the euphoric gamblers who have been driving the market high so, so fast. We'll see in a few months how this view worked out. That's all for today. Let me know in the comment below what you think of the above. Subscribe to the channel. Tell all your friends so they subscribe too. In the meantime, I'll see you next time. In the meantime, thank you very much for